Sì, buonasera, grazie mille Lugano per l'invito, um, sono, sono molto contento di, di, di possono, poter partecipare a questo, a questo evento e cambio di lingua. Um, hello everybody, good evening from my side. So, um, I'm very glad to, to follow up after my, my two previous speakers because I think uh, without having been coordinating our three contributions, at, at least I didn't, um, I think it's, it's, it's perfectly, um, perfectly comes together in a way that um, I, as director of a funding body, will, will um, describe the situation logically from a different point of view and perspective, but I think many of what has many things of what have been said before um, absolutely fit with um, our observations um, as a um, arts art council during the first um, phase of this crisis have been. So I try to rush through, not in that speed and that perfect English as as Anto Reggiani, but but still um, through what we have been observing in Switzerland. I will give a pretty, pretty strong accent, not so much on the audience and on cultural institutions, but more on cultural workers and artists, because that's what we are uh, here for, Proavezia, the Swiss Art Council. And I think it's very interesting to look at their situation and at their possible contributions um, um, for a, a digital transformation. So, um, just to tell you where what the sources are of of my um, presentation it is and that's very important to share with you our experiences as an art council proetia within the last half year it is the result of many many discussions with um, national and international funding bodies and it is also um, the, the, the result of a very important, unfortunately still unpublished um, study that has been made by two Swiss experts, Diana Betzler and Lara Leuschen, Digital Transformation in Art and Culture, that is kind, trying to give a kind of overview about the situation in Switzerland and also delivering possible approaches for the Swiss um, cultural sector. I've been talking to Diana yesterday. She's willing, to, for all those who are interested in learning more about, to, to share information with, with you. She has a website, Diana Petzler. You can find her email there and, as I said before, easily contact her. So, um, what I said before, and I repeat it, it's, it's been a bit of a strange uh, preparation for today, because when I confirmed my participation, we still were in a slightly different situation than we are. Now we were in something that I myself was experiencing as a, as a euphoric um, situation, even though COVID was not a euphoric um, phenomenon, but what is, it was provoking in the cultural sector was very stimulating beside the, 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 the sorrows and the worries that were existing. So normally I would have started with that kind of, of um, example um, of an artist, Nina Chanel Abney, that is working with augmented reality. And I'm quoting her um, with, with that sentence that I find um, very good in a time at which our in-person social interactions are limited due to the pandemic. I've been forced to think more about the future of art. I think this is referring to, to what um, Anne and Philip has, have been saying before, just maybe from another point of view. And you can see an example of, of her work. This is this character she has been creating, the imaginary friend. And if you download this acute art um, app, you can use that character and put it into um, the location you are, you can put it into your living room, into your office, and you can create your own pictures together and in exchange with a character that is also speaking to you. This is a very beautiful example, a very interesting example. Uh, there are plenty of, but before continuing, as I also have a kind of responsibility to, to, um, towards the circumstances we are in, I want to mention and very clearly saying that I'm a big defender of the digital transformation. I absolutely believe that this transformation, uh, the use of the digital potentials has, has to be done. It has to be done very clearly and, and in a 
in a let's say um, very very positive constructive way but i wa don't want to deny that actually the situation of the cultural sector talking about institutions and practitioners artists is pretty worrisome and as i said before we have started at least it was our experience in march april towards the summer break in a kind of worried euphoric situation it was very motivating and and provoking a lot of initiatives we are actually in a pretty worried situation and i think this is important just to mention because if we in, want to invite practitioners, institutions to digitally transform, we have to know where they are at. We have to make something positive out of the situation, not to force it, not just to say now you have to, or there is nothing else left. Um, so we really have to consider this. And that's the ground on which I want to talk about possible approaches from the cultural political side from funding bodies. This has been mentioned before. It's highly important to, to just show it very clearly. And I'm not criticizing it. I'm just showing it. This, with a bit cheap title, the winner takes it all, is a fact. There is, as Anne has expla been explaining very brilliantly, there is an enormous use of the digital in culture. But a very important question in the future will be, where does the money go? How will the money be distributed and who can participate um, in this uh, distribution of money? In which way? What about gatekeepers? I will come back to this later on. This very impressive just to see, and we know about the difficult situation of cinemas, of the film sector. This is um, the increased revenue of Netflix only in the third quarter of 2020. It's highly impressive. And I think it will continue in a in a in, in a pretty similar way within the next month, especially around Christmas and New Year's Eve. So my question is, and that's a bit the 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 the, the line through my, the next fifteen minutes. What can art do? What can artists do? Not so much what can institutions do, um, but really what can the individuals do? What can collectives do? And I would like to start with some, um, in my opinion, good practice from Swiss artists and curators. The first one is um, a project made by a um, theater company that is based in Berlin, but coming, coming partly from Switzerland, that is called Machina X. As you can imagine, reading the, the name of the company, it's a company that for years now is working with, um, with technology, with the question of how theater, live theater can be transformed just from the classical approach to theater audience um, stage and the play that is, that is presented into different ways of interacting and of acting. That um, field can be called as network theater. And for all those who are interested, this play called Homecoming is actually still on. It's online and it's, um, it's, it's, it can be um, visited. And um, as you can see, and that's very interesting, they are working, or what you need, sorry, what you need is an internet access, is a telephone and is a letterbox um, because they play with different medias. Um, and that's what I found very interesting in that first good practice example. The second one, one of my favorite projects of the last month is the Project Viral. The Project Viral um, is an online literature festival created by, by a Swiss author, Donald Blum, living in Berlin together with her colleagues. And what I found so amazing, we all know that the, 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 the literature field is is not in its production, but in its presentation, still pretty traditional. Very often it's a lecture of an author uh, in front of audience in a concrete, con concrete venue. Nothing against that, but what happens when there is a lockdown? And what they have been doing under the title of Viral, what is very intelligent, they have been creating a Facebook literature festival. You see here on the screen a kind of starting image. This was the start of the evening. Four or five writers invited to read and then to discuss. And like that, they were presenting through uh, two or three months uh, more than 50 Swiss, German and Austrian writers 
on a very, very high quality um, with a very good audience, with a regular audience. And this I found very remarkable because the way was very simple. It was just using Facebook, the cameras um, in everybody's computer, and then presenting and discussing on a high level uh, German speaking literature. The third one, it's called second, but it's wrong. It's the third one is a, um, an artistic project by an artist called Veronika Spierenburg, Mass Files. This is real digital art practice, a project that has been um, supported through a call for projects. I will present you later on. It's a, a project that is, sorry, that is, sorry, um, that is working with, um, with urban realities that is kind of um, recording uh, voices, noises, etc., all over the world and picturing the world in real life. As you can see here, you see the dates, a very fascinating project. You can go on the website massfiles.net and you can find plenty, plenty of files from all over the world, a very beautiful comment um, and a very beautiful invitation of let's say, collaborating, of creating a digital community through um, an artistic project and also very beautiful, it's an ongoing project. So those three examples are reasons why at the specific moment of, of the pandemic, we as an art council observing that the situation will continue that touring wasn't possible, that cultural exchange almost had stopped. Um, we saw that we had to do something. We had to, we wanted to contribute not only to solve the moment of crisis with specific measures, but to give a kind of signal into the future of artistic creation. And we invented that call that was called Close Distance, seeking new cultural formats. Um, the reasons why we did that, I mean, you know them. Uh, most of them have been mentioned before as well. I just underlined the most important elements and I also underlined what we were looking for. We were looking for very specific projects, not necessarily, but we invited to, be, to, uh, to, to present digital projects, um, in different fields. It could be forms of reflection, it could be um, platform or networking projects, or it could just be just experimental forms of artistic collaborations. And we, we said to ourselves, it was somewhere um, in, in the beginning of the pandemic, let's see what will happen. And we were totally overwhelmed by the success of this call for projects, as you can see here. We started it um, officially the 7th of April. Um, we stopped it the 3rd of June and we got almost 600 applications. We were counting, expecting like 100, 150. We got four times that amount. We could only, because uh, our budgets are restricted, as, as you know, um, support 59 projects, what is only 10%. Um, with contributions rates between 5,000 and 35,000 francs, what, um, what led to a total contribution of a bit more than 1 million. Very interesting, this is maybe more interesting for Swiss listeners, um, the projects ca came from all over Switzerland, and from the 59 projects, and this was very, very beautiful for us to see, 35 were in cooperation with international partners. And that's something um, we, we were hoping for, that even though cultural exchange and even though mobility wasn't possible and still isn't really possible, um, art pra practitioners, artists from all over the world wanted to cooperate in you in different ways. Also interesting and also making us pretty happy is that uh, the projects ca came from all disciplines, from different fields, mostly visual arts and performing arts, music, but also interdisciplinary ones, literature projects and interactive media projects. And very nice, this is um, kind of, uh, kind of, yeah, let's say, um, positive um, sign for the team working on. Uh, the UNESCO was nominating this project, this call for project as an exemplary way of dealing with the pandemic. 
So now it's getting interesting. Um, beside this, we had the situation that many of our activities abroad all over the world couldn't be realized anymore. And we invited our different teams to adapt, to transform their activities into, again, digital ones. And I just, there were plenty um, activities, but I just want to mention, to point out three different, um, different activities. Very interesting and still ongoing and probably um, continuing for the next years is this new format, Home Not Alone Residency. As Proelvetia is funding a lot of residences all over the world, we didn't want just to cancel those residencies. And we were offering and discussing with our partners and artists whether they would be interested in doing digital residencies. And all of them accepted and, and immediately said yes. And we were trying and it worked out pretty well. You can see all this, by the way, on our website. There is plenty of information by, um, by offering programs, exchange program, research program, and so on and so on, just um, uh, on, the, on the digital way. And one element that I found very interesting in this was not only that it was possible to kind of replace it, but we had, for instance, discussions between artists and curators, Colombia and Switzerland, let's, let's say, that thanks to the fact that they were digital, we could open to the audience. What usually Maybe it would have happened, but with a small audience in an off space somewhere in Switzerland or Colombia. Here, all of a sudden, with Zoom or another uh, technical help, we could open this discussion and invite and make participate much more people than we usually could have been doing. The same was happening with platforms. We have a lot of platforms. We are presenting Swiss art. One is Swiss Selection Edinburgh, where we would have presented three plays. Those three plays couldn't be shown, it is clear. We tried to replace it by digital networking and coaching events, virtual branches, etc., with a lot of um, reactions, with uh, more than 70 professionals participating in it. And this also was a nice way to see that it was possible, even though it was not live, to still promote those theater plays um, thanks to digital means. And the last one, I'm very short there because I don't want uh, t time to run out too much. The same we did with the uh, Swiss Games Showcase 2020, what was replacing um, the presentation of Swiss Games and interactive media at fairs. So um, we all over were observing um, propositions and artistic projects in different fields. I tried to kind of define categories. There were very interesting projects in the field of networking. There were, this was said bef before and as uh, declared as very important, new approaches to the audience and the public. There were new accesses to markets. There were new formats, also very important, I find, to critical reflection and exchange. And there also was another way of uh, presenting projects in public space. So for us as an art council, the important question is with which formats of those formats, sorry, we want to continue in the future because we have to learn from the pandemic. We just don't want, want to see it as a crisis, but there is learnings. And we are actually discussing about podcast formats, about ongoing digital platforms for promotion networking on reinforcing um, international collaboration formats um, um, and about new ways of mediation to audiences in hybrid formats and delocalized. Now, this was Proelvetia. And you please just tell me when, when time is running out. Otherwise, I continue bringing this on a more national level. What could be um, next steps or what are necessary steps in Switzerland for digital transformation in the cultural sector? Here you see what the situation is. Many things actually are happening by accident. Many institutions are in a more reactive manner, but this is not only um, their fault. Um, there is in many institutions a lack of competences and resources to become more digital. And there also is a lack of a clear political mandate 
as there is a lack of funding, investing specifically into the digital and um, maybe one last element that very often in Switzerland in discussions, digitization is associated with archives and collections, what is a highly important field. But as we have heard before, it's by far not the only one. As Antoriciani has, has been saying, COVID-19 has been a beautiful accelerator, but we have to take into consideration there is this kind of value gap she has been talking about. And we need appropriate framework conditions and we need, and that's really very important, very specific public and private fundings to continue. Otherwise, we can continue dreaming of a digital transformation, but it won't happen in that way we would need it to happen. It really needs, and that's something I say as a director of an art council, it needs very specific um, funding systems to, um, to motivate the uh, cultural sector to become more digital. This, I think, is a summary. You can read it when you get the presentation later on. This is really the summary of what, what I've been saying. So the key questions in Switzerland would be, and there is two more slides and I'm over, how can good and relevant ideas be generated? How do we want to deal with the increase in the artistic production? How should we deal with gatekeepers and maybe create new gatekeepers or new platforms? How can cultural producers achieve higher and better returns? How can we achieve more media competence? Very important. And, and there I'm, I'm again um, referring to what Antori Gianni was saying. How can we find common focal point synergies through cooperation? Because it's not a solution that everybody is trying to solve it by himself, by herself. So to finish some overarching recommendations. Um, what I find very beautiful, and here I completely quote Diana Betzler and her study, it would be helpful to think in a kind of digitized cultural value chain, to really not only pick out elements, but to think if we think the digital, it will affect the making of ideas. It will make, uh, affect the production the distribution, the consumption, the participation, and also the preservation. And there, for the cultural sector, for the policymakers, there will be beautiful approaches, beautiful ways of really thinking this field together and deciding or focusing on one element, a second element, to, and to really kind of build a strategy for some years. It takes time, it needs resources, but it's worth really thinking this in a, in a, in a line. And this is, and that's my last one, um, possible engagements for funding bodies. Um, it's very helpful to invest into platform models. It is very important um, to support advisory models for cultural organizations to share knowledge. To, to share experiences, to share competences. It needs new business models for artists and creative startups. It needs alternative financing models. It needs, sure, innovation projects in digital art creation. And it would also be helpful to have guidelines for participation and inclusion. So this was a lot of information, hopefully understandable. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Bischoff. Uh, we have a short question for you. Uh, as you said, in Switzerland, the cultural system is based on a healthy relationship between the public and private sectors. How do you think public cultural policies may change after COVID in this sense? If I knew, um, <laughs> no, I don't know it. Honestly, I really don't know. I mean, what I can say that we are very, very carefully observing the situation. And that's, um, that's something I find very positive. I see a lot of um, really careful attention from the political side. I think politicians have understood that the system is very fragile. I would say that um, one element, and I just maybe mentioned this as a possible change or change, sorry, or evolution is what I've been trying to, to, to explain as well, that the different levels, the confederation, the cantons and the communities, but also the private and the public has, have seen 
once again, and even stronger than before, that it needs more coordination, that it really needs clear focuses, because we cannot do everything on the same level. We have to attack the main, the main um, topics, the main fields. And my big hope, but also my belief, is that there will be a more coordinated um, polit uh, cultural policy within the next years. Also, and that's something very important to add, not only be between the, the, the political side of the public and the private sector, but also of the cultural associations, cultural institutions, really a kind of round table um, as, an, as, a, as a picture of cultural policy for the next years. This would be my wish, and I'm pretty confidential that we achieve this. 